Hey everyone, we're going to be taking a look at Milwaukee's new M18 TrueView LED stand light. It's a good portable solution for when you need overhead light on a job site uh, that doesn't have any power. It's a pretty portable solution. The whole thing weighs 15 pounds with a 5 amp hour battery installed. It's got a good grab handle on the top right here so you can just pick it up. Uh, it doesn't have a carry strap but you can put it on your shoulder pretty easily or just carry it on your, uh, with your hand and it's uh, the world's biggest flashlight as you're on your way out to the job site. The light has three settings which you can cycle through by hitting the power button. On high it's 2000 lumens and using a 5 amp hour battery it'll last four hours. On medium it's 1300 lumens and it'll last six hours and on low it's 850 lumens and it'll last approximately 10 hours. I did a runtime test myself using a 2 amp hour battery and it lasted 1 hour and 37 minutes. That's dead on for Milwaukee specs uh, for 1 and a quarter amps on high. Since it's a light with a steady current draw instead of something like a saw or a, a drill that has varying torque ranges, you're going to have really accurate runtime predictions for the lights. So we'll go ahead and take a closer look at the features this thing has, and then I'll show you how it works. So here's the head with the 12 LEDs. You've got six on the outside and six on the inside in these reflector pockets. It looks like there's more, uh, but that's just because you're seeing the, the, all the reflections in there. Um, there. So there's a total of 12 LEDs on the light head. They're guaranteed for life, uh, and that's partially due to this awesome heat sink on the back here that keeps it really cool. I ran this for an hour straight on high, and it only got to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. But LEDs have a lifetime guarantee, so you don't have to worry about replacing them uh, like you would a halogen bulb. Down below here you've got the uh, swivel and the pivot for the head. You've got collars for adjusting the height of the whole stand light from 4 to 7 feet. Here's the power button, like I said, you just cycle through it to get to the different light intensity levels. To set the whole thing up, you just depress this button, pull this handle down, and push this one up. The whole thing sets up in less than five seconds. Stability legs are made of composite. Uh, they're pretty sturdy. They've got holes in the bottom here so you can screw them down to a surface. If you've got a, a plywood surface or something, you can anchor it down so the light doesn't fall over when it gets bumped. The main portion of the light is a pretty solid aluminum piece right here. Down here at the bottom you can see the battery bay. And right now I've got a 2 amp hour battery installed in it, but it's got plenty of room for definitely for a 5 amp hour battery and probably for a 9 amp hour battery that Milwaukee's coming out with later next year. The base itself is pretty sturdy and you can actually use it to store the, the whole thing upright without having the legs expanded. So it's a pretty small footprint in the shop. So here's the setup. It's super simple. Grab both handles, depress this thumb button, pull down and lift up. Once you've got the legs deployed, just grab each of these collars, you can do one at a time, and pull up on the light, lock the collar down. You can swivel adjust it and put it the rest of the way up, all the way to seven feet. The light's pretty sturdy, even if you bump into it, it's not going to go falling right over right away. You see I can hit it pretty hard from all different directions. I almost sent it over there, but I'm really trying here. So I mean. If I really wanted to, I could hit this thing and send it over, but you can see just bumping into it isn't going to topple the whole thing. The swivel head is a pretty good range of motion. It goes from one side hitting the pole all the way to the other, and then it rotates almost all the way around. Now, it doesn't have any positive stops, uh, but it is pretty firm when you put it in one location and let it go. I haven't had any problems with it losing its position. Now, if it does start to get a little bit loose, there are torque screws on the side of this that I'm assuming I can tighten down and get a good fit again. One really great feature about this light is 30 seconds to a minute before it runs out of battery, it starts flashing at you. So that means you've got enough time to get across the room and put a new battery pack in it before you're fumbling around in the dark. Closer look at the base. You can see it's got a really low center of gravity with a battery pack right there at the very bottom. Uh, that helps it keep from tipping over, but then you do have to bend all the way over to get the battery pack changed out. Uh, each of these legs is very sturdy composite, and it's also got... You can take these out if you want to take it apart for some reason. You just squeeze the metal band together uh, and pop it out. So now you've seen how it sets up and all of its features. Let's check out performance.
I'm going to turn off the lights in my garage and show you how it does illuminating the whole space. Alright, so I've got the stand light on high right now. It's illuminating. It's the only illumination you see in the garage. It's night outside, so there's no light coming in the windows. It's just the 2000 lumen high setting of the stand light. You can see there's plenty of visibility to do whatever I need to get done out here. Uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I could just use this instead of the fluorescence I have overhead. One drawback is, since there are 12 light sources, the shadows are a little bit weird and you get 12 different faded out shadows in all different directions. I don't know if you can see behind me on the wall uh, what my hand's doing with the shadow, but it's, it's not a traditional shadow. So if you're trying to use this for lighting or photography or something like that, it might not be the best solution. So this is on high. Here's medium, remember 1300 lumens. And then low is 850. Still plenty of light and you get 10 hours of runtime on a 5 amp hour battery. So the current draw goes from one and a quarter amps on high down to half an amp on low. We're back on high now. Just to put things in perspective, a regular light bulb is about 800 lumens. So if you've got your ceiling fan fixture with three light bulbs, you're getting 2400 lumens out of that. And this does 2000 on high. And it does 850 on low. So you can think of it as one, two, or three light bulbs approximately. The biggest complaint I have about this light is probably that it only takes M18 battery packs. It doesn't have the option to plug it into a wall outlet. So it's possible to do that with this type of light, with that type of power output that this thing has, because Milwaukee's new floodlight has a 3000 lumen output and it's got a hybrid capability to be plugged into the wall. I'm not sure why they decided not to put an AC to DC inverter in here. Uh, maybe it's a weight issue, maybe it's a space issue, but I really would have liked to see it in this thing. The $250 price tag this comes with might come as a bit of a shock, but if you look up the competition, you're actually getting a really great deal. I could only find two competitors that really made a product similar to this light. One looked like a piece of garbage for approximately the same price. The other one used proprietary batteries that are only good for that light platform, and had about half the light output this one did for approximately the same price. So Milwaukee's really pushing the envelope with this uh, in their capabilities and the price range they're releasing this. So hopefully this review was helpful. Once again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe.